It's Tuesday, July 26, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. It has been several weeks since I've done this again, sorry about that guys, but let's go ahead and jump right into the news. The first item of news to mention, and even though I've mentioned a few times before it's not a huge item, it is still sort of a big item in the media. Linux kernel version 3.0 officially released about four days ago on July 22nd. Again, there are a lot of new drivers and bug fixes, but really there's not a whole lot of huge amount of difference, nothing to really justify the 3.0 name. One way or another though, we do have a new kernel available, so look forward to it showing up in your favorite distro sometime in the near future. I don't think any distros are actually shipping with it at this point, though Ubuntu 11.10 should have that as the default. Hopefully Fedora 16 will, and hopefully Arch will have it before too long. Additionally, with the 3.0 release, they went ahead and created a new 3.0 real-time kernel, something that they hadn't done in the last few releases. From what I understood, the real-time kernel was no longer necessary, but apparently someone thinks that it is, so if you are needing the real-time kernel, don't worry, there will be one available. And since we're talking about kernel-related news, right after 3.0 was officially released, they started working on 3.1, and a part of 3.1, a very interesting part in my opinion, is they're going to have Wiimote driver support built into the kernel. So if you have Bluetooth and you have a Wiimote, you should be able to use it out of the box with kernel 3.1 onward, as long as it does end up working out in the long run. I don't know what you all think about that. I do have a Wii myself, so I do look forward to trying that out when it is available. Moving on to some other software update release type news, over the last couple of weeks Adobe officially announced the availability of Adobe Flash 11 Beta. Now the one really interesting thing about this, and it's something that I've mentioned a few times before and I read it on Pharonix and whatever else, Flash Player 11 is going to synchronize the 32 and 64 bit versions, so everyone should be happy at this point on Linux. I've actually been using Flash 11 Beta since it came out and it does work pretty well for me. It seems to crash a little bit here and there, but nowhere near as bad as the 32-bit version wrapped up in NS plugin wrapper worked, so I, I definitely think it's going to be a step in the right direction. I don't think it's quite as stable as the, uh, what was it, Flash Square was. But one way or another, they are working on something for Linux. They're working on both 32 and 64-bit, so yeah, I have to give them props for that one. In other software type operating system type whatever news you want to call it, Mozilla announced this week that they're working on their own operating system to compete with Chrome OS. Is this Linux related? Is it not? I'm not really sure. My guess would be that it's going to be somehow Linux based, but according to the Mozilla site, I didn't really see anything mentioning it. I probably should check it again, but if you do have any information on it, it's called Boot to Gecko, and basically it's going to be just the web browser running on top of the hardware, or running on top of Linux, assumedly. After my limited experience with Chrome OS, I don't hold huge hopes for this, but uh, who knows? A lot and a lot more apps are starting to become web-based, so we could see the move in that general direction over the next few years, but I will say I do enjoy having a lot of stuff stored locally and having my apps available locally even when I'm offline, so whatever. In another bit of interesting software type source code type related news, a I think it was last week actually, IBM decided they were going to give away the source code to their Symphony project, which I actually didn't realize is a fork of OpenOffice.org. They're giving the code back to OpenOffice.org, which has been donated to Apache. So we've actually gone from having Oracle owning OpenOffice.org and just deciding they're giving up on it and giving it away. Now Apache has it, it's under the Apache license. The Symphony code is going to be coming back into it. They're going to try to migrate and merge a lot of the things together, like Visual Basic for applications should start working for OpenOffice.org. They're gonna work on some accessibility features, that's very nice. What does this mean as far as LibreOffice? I don't know, I mean, it, it LibreOffice merged in a couple of interesting projects when they formed, and now OpenOffice is merging in a very interesting project. We could have some real competition out there in terms of open source Office solutions. Uh, if they would ever decide to merge back together, might be for the best interest of everyone, but I guess time will tell. Now in one piece of news that I find extremely interesting, because I am a big fan of movies and Blu-rays and whatever else, for a long time, if you buy a movie, you buy a Blu-ray or a Disney movie or whatever, a lot of times it comes with a digital copy. And for as long as I have known, that digital copy generally only works on Windows or Mac. You have to have iTunes to download it, something like that usually, or you have to use their proprietary downloader. 
Well, apparently 20th Century Fox has decided no more. They're moving away from that, and starting in October, they're going to start releasing movies, and I think the first one's actually going to be X-Men First Class, with a direct download that you can push over to your Android-based devices specifically. So if you have an Android-based device and you've been missing out on having your latest and greatest movies available on it, and you're not willing to pirate said movies, definitely look forward to something like that coming out in the next six months to a year. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up with a little bit of gaming news. Almost two weeks ago at this point, Zero AD's Alpha 6 became officially available. If you hadn't remembered, I've been covering Zero AD stuff since one of the earlier releases. They're a bunch of great people. The RTS real-time strategy game they're working on definitely looks interesting. This update brought along with it a bunch of new improvements, such as new textures and new sound effects and new buildings, and actually they added in unit stances so that you can have the units stand in different ways. Like you can set them to violent or passive or aggressive. I've actually seen some things like this in other games, so it's definitely nice to have that option available. But one way or another, if you have not tried out Zero AD yet, definitely go ahead and give it a look. They're making progress little by little. I think the game's actually been in development for 10 years, but ever since they open sourced it about, what is it, a year, a year and a half ago, they've made some huge strides and they've actually got a functional game at this point. That's, is, last time I played it was actually very fun. And the last bit of gaming news, and the last bit of news in general I'd like to talk about is the Humble Indie Bundle. The new one is now available, just came out earlier today. Of course, this is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There are five games available in it. A lot of them are puzzle-based games or some interesting physics-based games. So if you are interested, go ahead and head over to their website and check it out. They've got a video demonstrating it at all. Just check it out. You can pay whatever you want and you get it on all the platforms. A lot of them are Steam available as well. So give that a shot. If you are interested, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I try to do this again sometimes very soon, but uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.